We're going to head over to Unreal in just a second, but before I do, I wanted to also export the height map out at 1K to demonstrate an important concept. So I've got the 1K and the 2K exported out already, and I've named them appropriately. Okay, let's go to Unreal. I'm going to make a new level, a basic level. I'm going to select the floor and delete it. We're going to go to landscape mode and import from file. And I'm going to grab the 2K height map. And we'll just hit import. It's clearly very tall. I'm going to come down to the scale in the details panel, make sure the lock icon is unlocked, and set it to 30 in Z. And this will be approximately correct. So what I want to talk about is this stuff down here. And to do that, I'm going to hop back over to Manage, New. We're going to import the same file, but what I'm going to do here is rather than doing a one by one section is I'm going to set this to two by two. And in order to get the same size height map, I'm going to have to cut the number of components in half. So you can see we're still generating a 2017 by 2017 overall resolution uh, landscape here. I'm just going to hit import. We'll select the second landscape. Set the Z scale to 30. And I'm going to go to selection. So hopefully what is apparent here is these two landscapes are identical in terms of their appearance. But if you look down here, the first one we created has over a thousand components. And the second one has 256 components. That's the same number of verts though, which is the number of verts on either side. And that's going to dictate the resolution. So what's going on? Let's go back over to landscape. I'm going to go to manage and select. So with the landscape with the higher component count selected, what you can see when I mouse over is the size of the component. As opposed to the, the second one, the components are now four times larger, so a two by two. What is the difference? Each component, each highlighted square here in this case, has a CPU cost and a draw call. So the more components you have, you are incurring a higher CPU cost and a higher number of draw calls. So why would you pick the scenario that has a higher number of components? The answer is when you have more components, you can be more aggressive with your LOD scenario. So like if I turn on the wireframe here, as I'm zooming in, hopefully you can kind of see that, well, it's a little bit of a challenge with both of the landscape showing. But if I zoom out, you can see that I am resing in more vertices the closer I get to each component, right? So if we look at the other one with the, with the uh, larger components, those LOD scenarios are, they have to wait until the object is further away before we can begin doing any LOD, right? So we can begin a more aggressive LOD scenario when we have smaller components. The other thing is any component that is off screen is being cold. We're not rendering it. So maybe you can see I've got this little tiny corner here, right? With the smaller component, it's only drawing that part of the component. Obviously, I just went off the recording uh, distance a little bit. But if this was larger, even if there's a tiny piece of it showing, it has to draw the entire thing. So that is the difference between using larger components versus smaller components. You are incurring higher draw calls and a little bit more uh, traffic on the CPU, but you get a more aggressive LOD scenario and you are able to call more geometry. So it's kind of a trade-off. And which one you should use is dependent on, on all the other ways that your particular project happens to be expensive. And it's uh, not something that I can necessarily diagnose here, but there's more information that is totally worth your time. There's a document, Landscape Technical Guide, which will kind of run through a lot of the details on how best to set this up. So definitely worth reading through. It also explains why there's all these weird numbers like 1009 and 2017, as opposed to 1024 and, and a 2048. So definitely uh, good information there to look into. All right, let's go to selection and delete the other landscape here. What I want to talk about now is the difference between a 1K and a 2K. So let's head back over to landscape. We'll go to new, 
I'm going to go and select my 1K file, and we'll just hit import here. All this data will be updated. Let's select the second landscape and fix the Z scale. And it may be obvious. Let me go to the top view here. Turn on wireframe. And tap the F key to fit. The 1K landscape is one quarter the size of the 2K landscape. And that is as you might expect. But if we go to back to the perspective mode here and back to wireframe, if I zoom in, and once the LODs are kind of finished resolving, the resolution that we're getting between these two landscapes is identical. It is one vert per meter. And that is important because if you want to do any kind of sculpting or painting, the highest resolution you're going to get between a 1K and a 2K is one vert per meter by default. So with a, I mentioned earlier, the 4K is really expensive. If I didn't, I meant to. The 4K is really expensive and it'll slow everything down, but it's four times larger than this. So you end up with 16 times the number of verts that you would with a 1K. So sometimes this is not enough resolution to do the things that you might want to do if you need to do sculpting or painting, um, particularly if you have like geometry and you want the, the landscape to snugly fit around whatever it is that you're trying to do, right? So one thing that I have discovered, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, doesn't seem to cause any obvious problems, is I will just import a 2K and then once I've fixed the scale on Z, go ahead and lock it and I'll just scale everything down by 50%. So what I am effectively doing here is rather than having one by one meter be my resolution, I now have 0.25 by 2, uh, 0.25 meters as my, as my vert resolution. Now you can see the, the positions are off here. Let me go over to selection. So you can see where the pivots are, right? So if I'm really motivated for this thing to be in the center, right? If I create, uh, let's just make a, a, a thing here. Make a shape, make a cube, and I'm going to zero out the position of the cube. So you can see this cube is in the at the origin, that's in the center. So if you're working at the beginning of your project and you know you want stuff to be kind of in a, a spot that makes sense for your transforms not to have crazy long numbers next to them, um, if you just try to put your wherever you're going to be working, make that the origin of your landscape. It'll make your life a little bit easier, right? So I'm going to get rid of the 1K. Well, actually, I'll hang on to it for just one second. I'm going to grab the transform, though. So we just copy that. Uh, sorry, not the whole transform, just the location. Paste that in. Take a second. OK, so now we can kind of get a better sense for the difference between the 1K and the 2K when we scaled it down. Right. So in terms of painting and sculpting, the 2K is going to give you, uh, hopefully this is obvious, I'm too far away. That's it. Also, the other thing that's that's important to note, you can see the scale is not not translated perfectly. There we go. Between the two resolutions, you're actually going to get a little bit of different data directly out of Gaia. So I'm just going to kind of scale this up. Bring it would. I'm just trying to get these a little bit closer. Yeah, that's fine, whatever. It's also it's scaling it from the midpoint. So anyway, big picture, in my opinion, the best way to get good results out of Gaia is to export at 2K and then scale it uh, in half. And then as you are like at the beginning of your project, there's there, this thing is at the origin. So what I want to do is actually want to drop the landscape it's probably this cube is probably too small. Let's make it easier to find by 10. There we are. So whatever, if I was, you know, working in this little, this little landscape area and I wanted my, my values to be reasonable, this is a good way to set that up. So from the get go, you're, you're dealing with something that makes, makes sense. Okay, cool. That's the first part of setting up our height maps in Unreal. In the next video, we will continue on the topic and, and maybe begin talking about the texture graph and making some landscape layer masks. So see you there.